show you this today. Right, so, Sunpot by Vaughan Bode. All familiar with Vaughan Bode? If you're not familiar with Vaughan Bode, now is the time. So, Vaughan Bode, great underground comic artist of the uh, 1960s. Look at this fella, Dr. Electric. You're going to recognise a lot of... Those of you who studied New York Graffiti, you're going to see a lot of, uh, of characters you've seen in New York Graffiti because Vaughan Bode was... Um, was used by the uh, all the early writers, uh, particularly on the subway, as characters. His, uh, his, his characters are so idiosyncratic, beautiful characters, amazing characters. He's influenced many writers, and uh, well, all of, well, probably all of us who are character artists from uh, from that kind of time, um, from early UK. I'm getting ahead of myself. Vaughan Bode, yeah, underground '60s artist. This is uh, this is some part of the spaceship he designed. So he was a contemporary Vaughan Bode of people like Bernie Wrightson and uh, Robert Crumb, Barry Windsor Smith, all those kind of people. And whereas people like Bernie Wrightson, Barry Windsor Smith went on to do um, things like Marvel. Barry Windsor Smith went on to do Conan and uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, Bernie Wrightson went on to do other loads of other Marvel properties. Um, Robert Crumb, obviously, illustrative legend that he is. Belinda Bump, so fantastic. Um, and the Lizards, of course, famous Bode characters. This fella, the Screws, again, I mean, we've all used them. Uh, so beautiful, so brilliant. Yeah, uh, and Bode died in, I think it was 69. He died, uh, Mark Bode's his son, uh, has, has continued his legacy um, and Mark does all this sort of stuff as well and uh, and has sort of uh, expanded the universe the Bode universe kept it all alive but just look at this illustration he was self-taught he was a self-taught artist Vaughan Bode and look at that for, for self-taught art look at the composition of his work uh, and it's so beautifully original I don't know who his major influences were Look at this. But you can see how he's influenced all of us. I mean, sometimes I look at his stuff. I did something recently, which was a a sort of um, a machine driven by one of my little wasp characters. And I kind of, I just did it from, you know, did it, did it out of my head because I do everything out of my head. But suddenly I look at that and go, that's better than what I did. <laughs> and uh, And it's clearly, clearly what I did was so heavily influenced by Bode without knowing it because that that's what happens you take you you sort of saturate yourself with uh with your major influences you know when artists always say to me how do i get better how do i you know beginning artists always say to me how do i get better how do i develop a style you've got to saturate yourself in the stuff you really love and uh and practice a lot of your own stuff as much out of your own head as possible and eventually you develop your own style and it's heavily influenced by other people's style that's how it works uh God, look at it! Isn't it gorgeous? It's just fantastic. So beautifully, kind of. If you look at his lines as well, his line work is often very simple, and he doesn't use obviously he doesn't use any complex shading. It's all black and white line ink, uh, minimal cross hatch. A lot of it's just it's just, it's line work. I don't know how big he worked when he worked. Mark could probably tell us. I don't know how large he worked. I don't know if he worked on A3 size like a lot of artists do, or if he worked on A4 size, because this is A5 size, it's quite small. I don't know what the equivalent sizes are in the US, but in the UK we say, uh, we use the A system, you know, A, A1 is massive. I think A0 is the biggest you can get. A1 is huge, and then A2 is half that size, A3 is half that size, A4 is half that size. A5, so that is an A5, so that is an A4, the two pieces together. But he's working in portrait format, I guess on A4, I would guess, from the thickness of line, the line weight and everything, I would say he's working on A4, but who knows, who knows, Mark probably knows. Uh, yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Look at this little battle sequence with the... Uh, with the wasp machines that's a great one i've seen that in a piece i've seen that painted in a piece before 
Look at these characters. Amazing characters that he was illustrating in the... I don't know when this was done. Do you know what I'm saying? 1969, I'm suddenly thinking, I wonder if he did die in that 69 or if it was early 70s. Because... Uh, if you look at his early style, his early style isn't quite as sophisticated as this. It's on its way. You can see where it goes uh, with things like The Man. Cobalt, uh, Cobalt 60 was later. What else? Cheech Wizard, of course, is his big famous invention. This sun pot is one of them things which is sort of... It's like... It's reasonably rare. You can get them, but they're quite expensive. 20p. I didn't pay 20p for it. <laughs> well, I didn't pay that much for it. Because I got this years ago, and um, and it's a lot more expensive now. I saw one. I saw. I saw one on eBay the other day for about seventy-five quid. That's quite expensive, isn't it? Quite expensive for a little, you know, kind of like you know, photocopy fanzine. But they are old. This is like early seventies, I believe. I believe. Look at that character again. The hands on it, beautiful. You can see how he's influenced so many of us. Chio is a big one for being influenced by Bodo. He talks about his Bodo influences. He's got a video. Go to Chio's channel. He's got a, a video talking about how much he's influenced by um, by Vaughan Bodo. He goes through Bodo's work and his own work and stuff like that. You see the influences. And he's worked with Mark Bodo on stuff as well, which I think was a bit of a dream come true for Chio. You can really understand that if somebody's like, your, you know, that's your major influence. But you can see how this guy has influenced the work of... Uh, of graphers. Uh, if you've got the books, Subway Art, Spray Can Art, you'll see Bodo's characters on Subway Trains in that. And uh, people, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I mean, famously, um, Don D. White's Top to Bottom Whole Car, he uses Bodo characters in that. I think they're from Dead Bone. I've got Dead Bone somewhere. I can't find it. If I can find my Dead Bone, my copy of Dead Bone, I will give you a flip of that as well. So you can see those characters and I'll point them out. But um, Belinda Bump, this one, his, 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 his women were known as um, broads. We call them broads. Broads and lizards. And broads and lizards are a sort of recurring theme throughout. Because as an artist, as a character artist particularly, what you're looking for is you're looking for like sort of motifs. You're looking for characters to become running characters that people recognise straight, straight away as yours. They're sort of your trademark characters. The Bode characters are famously the Lizards, the Broads, Cheech Wizard, Cobalt 60. You know, we would we would recognise them straight away as uh, as as Bode. And Bode's tropes are things like ultra violence. He uses a lot of violence in his stuff. Very sort of comedy violence, a lot of it. Uh, sex as well. Sort of broad minded views about sex. Um some pot is obviously set in space, but a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily space. A lot of it's kind of like um, alternate reality kind of stuff. Dead Bone, Cheech Wizard, Cobalt 60. Oh, look, everybody's dead. <laughs> That's a classic sort of Bode trope. And now everybody's dead. Uh, just look at that. Look at this illustration. It's just gorgeous. And I could just look at it all day. Um, some pot is dead. The end. That's it. So I just wanted to give you. Let's have a look. Uh, okay. So some copyrighted uh, 1971. Okay, he can't have been dead in 69. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it on the video. And because uh, I hate being a mug about that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's 71 anyway. Some pot. If you can get a hold of a copy, grab one for yourself. If you can't, there there is other Bode stuff you can get. Mm, probably not that cheaply, but. Yeah, you know, Bode is where it all begins and ends for for character artists who have a crossover with Graf. Uh, you know, we were all influenced by Bode. I know I've said it a lot, but it's it's true. You know, Bode was the guy. He was the go-to guy for characters because his characters fitted the the spirit of Graf so much. And a lot of the um, a lot of the if you look at the early B Boy characters and stuff, you can tell how much they're influenced by Bode's work, the style of Bode. So there you go, bit of uh, bit of introduction stuff to Bode Sunpot. If you can, if you're if you're feeling flush, grab one off eBay. If you're not, there's plenty of stuff on Google Images anyway. Check out Vaughn Bode on on Google Images. Have a look and go follow uh, Mark Bode on uh, Instagram as well. Cheers. <laughs>